there are two versions of WordPress. Uh, one is WordPress.com and WordPress.org. Um, and they share some common ground, but still have a lot of differences. Um, WordPress itself is uh, just like a CMS used to create websites. Um, and you can showcase like online shops, blogs, things like that. It's free and it's open source and it does power about 43% of the world's websites. WordPress.com is a hosting platform. It allows you to create your site, manage it for free. Um, and the way it works is similar to how uh, WordPress.org would work. Um, WordPress.org is for anyone who wants a bit more flexibility. So it's WordPress.org is the actual software that anyone can download and use it for free. Uh, but to run it, you need your own hosting server and your own domain name. So this is where it gets maybe um, into more paid versions um, of the website platform. So the main difference between the two versions is the way your site is hosted. Um, so WordPress.com is a hosting platform and they will host your site yourself, uh, uh, themselves. You don't need to worry about that. It's more of a sort of turnkey solution. While .org is a self-hosted solution, i.e. you take care of it yourself. But the software used to run both versions is the same. Um, so they are still closely linked together. In this example, I'll show you how to build a website using WordPress.com um, to build a free website. So the first thing you want to do is go onto WordPress.com and click on Get Started. And it'll ask you to provide an email address, username, and a password. You can also continue with Google or with Apple. The next thing then you want to do is a uh, get a domain. So um, you can get a free one-year domain registration with any paid annual plan, um, or you can connect a domain that you already own. Um, what you can also do is just choose the domain later as well. The next thing then you want to do is choose a plan. So in this example, we're building a website for free, but just to go over quickly some of uh, WordPress's hosting plans, um, you can see it's split between pay monthly and pay annually. Um, so depending on how uh, you're wanting to use your billing cycle, but essentially it's split into personal, premium, business, and e-commerce. Um, personal uh, and being the cheapest, about three pounds a month, um, through six pounds annually, you get the free domain, you get the free hosting, and you get to remove WordPress ads, and you can collect payments, and you can get customer support. Um, obviously, with the, the with the higher uh, premium plan that you go, the more support that you get. You get things like uh, inter Google Analytics interaction, um, SEO tools, um, database access, things like that, live chat support with the e-commerce one. Um, so it just depends on um, which. Uh, platform you kind of go for. If you scroll down on this page, there's some frequently asked questions, um, things like is hosting included? Um, can I use a domain that you already own? All of this is um, included within this page as well. Um, but again, uh, in this example, we're just going to start off with the free site and it's going to start building out the site basically. So similar to Wix, it'll, it's going to ask you about your site goals and essentially your business needs, um, whether um, you want to sell online, if you want to write and publish, promote yourself, things like that. So you want to select everything that applies, or you can fully just skip to the dashboard if you wanted to. And then you want to say what your website is about. Um, and you want to just give a sort of topic that you think would help. And if not, um, you can always uh, just click on something else. Um, but this will kind of help you in, sort of in, in terms of giving suggestions, in terms of like picking your theme, things like that. And then you want to give a, uh, a name. And you can give it a tagline as well. So explain what your store is about um, in a few words. Both of these are optional. The next thing then is to pick a design. So if you remember, we picked store and blog as our business goal. So it's showing me a lot of, um,
So you can see once it's loaded, it's gone directly to the blog page. Um, so I'm just going to come out of there just to show you the dashboard a little bit. Um, So this is your WordPress dashboard, um, and this is kind of an overview of your site, um, similar to like the Wix dashboard. Um, you can preview your blogs and see what else is left to do um, with the site. It'll show you the next steps. So in terms of, so we've got the blog set up here. We've named our blog, we've previewed it, we've browsed our themes. The next few steps are to publish our post, enable post sharing and launch our blog. Um, and you can see, um, there's different options here as well. Um, so this is the home, this is how you get the dashboard. And then down here, you'll see things like upgrades. So this is um, how you can, up if you wanted to upgrade your plans, add some add-ons um, and things like that. Um, again, so these add-ons would be uh, paid. So if you want a premium themes or if you want custom to be able to add custom CSS, things like that. Um, the post tab is where you'll be adding all of your blog pages. Um, uh, so these are the blogs that we have currently. So it comes with sort of uh, optional and placeholder blogs. But essentially, if you wanted to add blogs or edit blogs, you'll go into posts and edit the blogs here. Then you've got the media library. And this is essentially all of the media that, that's been added to your site uh, is saved here, similar to Wix. And um, they're all saved here as well. Um, the other thing that you need to do then is if you wanted to add new, just click on add new and you can add new bits of media as well. Um, from your uh, computer. Um, so you would just click on the image from your computer and just click upload to add the images um, onto your website and then they're free to use on your blogs and in your pages. Then you've got the actual pages tab and these are the pages that are on your website. So right now we just have the home page. It is possible to add a new page if you wanted to, if you wanted to add like maybe like an about page or a gallery page, something like that. The other thing you can see is WooCommerce. So this is the uh, email sorry, the plugin used to set up um, uh, the e-commerce functionality. Um, so you are free to kind of add products, edit products here as well. The only thing to make sure though is if you want to start accepting payments similar to Wix is that you need to have one of the WordPress uh, business plans. Within the appearance tab, this is where you'll actually edit your theme if you wanted to. So if you go into appearance and then themes, um, you can see if there's more themes that you want to use instead of the one that you picked, you can always change it. You can see in the themes dashboard, so this one here that says active, this is the theme that we're currently using. But what you can do is uh, switch to the free tab here and browse through thousands more different themes um, that are free to use and easily applied on your site. So if you click on free and look for one of the themes that we have available, for example, this one here. Um, all you need to do in order to use it is click into it. And you can see the site theme being applied as well. So you can change your theme um, if you wanted to. Another thing to watch out for are the users and the settings. So if you wanted to add another person onto the site to maybe help you write blogs, you can add different users to the site um, so other people have access to your site as well. And then you've got the settings and this is just basic things that um, where you can change like the site icon, you can change the title and add the tagline here as well. Um, To view the site, once you've made uh, some changes, all you need to do is go into my site here. You can see just underneath, this is the URL that's kind of that's currently being used on your site. Um, you click into here and you can see the site as is and once with all the content added. Um, and you can make any changes as well. What you can do is click visit site. And this is how the site looks for the user. Um, what you can do is also click edit page and see what editing options that you have. So you can see this is the back end of the site and this is sort of built for you with the theme. Um, but what you can do is maybe add, change the content here and you can add uh, content here as well. Um, 
one thing that's pretty useful with WordPress is that they have something called the Gutenberg editor and this is what you'll use and which will basically allow you to um, add things like paragraphs, headings, um, you can add images and things like that. It just makes it easier to um, add new sections. Unlike Wix though, it's not as flexible, it's not very drag and drop, um, but you do have that option if you wanted to. You can add more pages um, if you go back to the pages tab and just click add new page. And you can see with the theme, it'll show you pre-designed uh, pages that you can just select um, depending on what kind of page you're going for. Um, you can just select um, a design theme as well and then just go in and change the content and then just click publish in order to publish that page and put it on your, on your site. The other thing that you want to do is add your blog. So if you go back into posts, what you want to do is click add new posts. And you just want it similar to Wix, you just add the name of the post and the actual uh, blog content. Um, and again, you can just uh, type directly or copy and paste it. And you do have some formatting options if you want to bold, if you want to add links, and you can also transform into headings. Um, and then once you're done, you want to make sure that you add an image and you can also add images uh, within the post as well. So similar to uh, Wix, you can add uh, image tags, you can add gallery tags, um, and that way you're, you're able to kind of publish content as well with images to kind of uh, make the uh, post more um, readable to users. Once you're done, you have all the pages on your site, you have all of the logos and you have all the blogs. The only other thing left to do is to actually launch your site. If you come into settings and scroll down to launch site, you can see here, so your site hasn't been launched yet, it's hidden, it's hidden from visitors. Um, what you want to do is click launch site. And this is where, um, uh, yeah, so this is where uh, you can, you'll have basically some, you might need to pay for. So um, the thing you want to do is choose a domain. Um, with WordPress, you do get the first year free. Um, so you can pick a blog that you, a uh, domain that you like. Um, and then you want to click on a site plan. So you can either pick one of the site plans or you can uh, click on a blog that uh, you, you can use the free site plan as well and then after that you just want to check out um, with your domain and that's essentially your site live um, so with uh, yeah so with um, WordPress the actual WordPress software is free but you you would need to get the uh, domain as well whether that's through WordPress or whether that's through Go GoDaddy things like that um, the domain is the only thing that you're paying for, but the hosting itself is free. Um, and if not, you're using this uh, website here. So um, your website is under this domain. So similar to how um, in Word in Wix, the free domain is not really a custom domain, and it's not uh, the most user friendly one in the world. Um, WordPress is the same. The other option that you have is using WordPress.com and downloading the actual WordPress file and then using it locally on your computer. This gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of designing your website, adding in themes, adding in um, plugins and things like that. So unlike the WordPress.org, WordPress.com um, you will need to find separate hosting for. WordPress.com is a hosting provider. Um, Hosting.com is a host hosting platform that provides you with that you know self-hosting as we've seen earlier, and WordPress.org is self-hosting solution. So um, you need to find an external third-party um, hosting provider in order to host your WordPress.org website. Um, but in any case, the software used to run both versions is the same. 
To give you a bit of an overview of the WordPress dashboard, again, it's similar to WordPress.com. So in terms of WordPress overview, this is the dashboard and this is where you'll see the main kind of WordPress updates that you have, depending on what themes and plugins that you have installed as well. Um, the first thing that you might want to do is tidy this up a little bit. Um, so for example, remove any bigger ads. So let's remember this welcome section here. You can just dismiss it. Um, and other things you can do is change these boxes that you first see in the beginning. Um, for example, um, WordPress events and news. If you do need that, you can keep it where it is, or you can click and drag these boxes um, to where you want it. Um, if there's some of these boxes that you absolutely don't need, so for example, the news and events, you can go into screen options and you can uncheck the boxes that you don't need. So this is the WordPress news and events. Um, I don't really need that. So I'm going to click on WordPress news and events and that's been taken away. I don't need quick draft, so I can take that away as well and everything else. Um, and so this dashboard is fully customizable and there'll be things added to it the more plugins that you add. So for example, if you add Gravity Forms, you get another box for Gravity Forms, Elementor, any kind of product plugins, um, SEO plugins, things like that. Um, they'll all be added here as a dashboard as well. Within the dashboard, you have the update section and any upcoming updates that you'll need to do will be set here. So right now everything's up to date, but the more plugins you'll add, the more likely you need to be updating them kind of every week. Um, and you'll see an overview of what plugins and things need to be updated as well. And you can also see uh, what version of uh, WordPress that it's currently on as well. Next, you have the post section. And this is where all of the blog content goes. So by default, when you first install WordPress, you'll have the Hello World uh, blog post. Um, you can click into that. It's already published and you can see how the blog looks on the back end and how it looks on the front end. Um, this post overview is where you'll uh, add all of the um, post content. So you can have all of the post content here and you can add uh, all the post blocks as well with Gutenberg, whether that's heading, gallery, paragraph, images, things like that. You can add all of them um, and click into all of them as well. Um, within the post content, you can uh, add featured images. Um, so if you click on featured image, um, you'll be able to upload images directly from your computer library or you can directly from your media library. Um, and Media library is essentially all the images that you've uploaded to your site will be saved here that you can reuse uh, on different parts of your website as well. Um, your posts can be organized into categories and tags as well. Um, and you can give it an excerpt. And depending on what theme you use, the excerpt will show on like the post page or like the home page. It might not always show. Sometimes the listing will only show a uh, heading and an image. Um, hence why it says optional. Um, it just depends on your theme. So this is the overview of the posts. Um, and again, all the posts that you write, whether they're published or not, they'll all be showed up here um, with the publishing date as well. Similar to the uh, dashboard, if you click on screen options, you can really see customize this dashboard. So for example, um, you can customize what columns can be seen. So if you don't want to see the, column, the author column or the comments column, you can take those away. You can decide how many uh, uh, number of items per page. So by default set to 20, you can set it to 10 or 30. Obviously, the bigger this number is, the longer it might take to load this dashboard. So just to be aware of that. Um, and then you've got compact view and extended view as well. Um, so it's up to you uh, how you want to dis uh, display this dashboard of yours. Um, but essentially, all of your uh, Posts, plugins, dashboard will all be here. Um, and then you can filter by dates as well. You can filter by categories and you can do bulk actions as well and things like that. Um, other things you can do within this post dashboard, you can see there's the add new button and this will just add new menu. This will just add a new post. You can do that here. You can do that in the add new button over here. Um, and you can also do it under the new button as well under post. Um, and you can also organize your categories. So if you click into categories, by default, WordPress will always have the uncategorized category, um, but uh, you can also add new categories. So to add a new one, um, you would just click, type in the name of the category. The URL slug, you don't have to type that in. If you leave it blank, it'll just take the name title and use that as the slug. Um, and then you can give it a descript description as well. Um, again, similar to the excerpt of a post, it's not always uh, visible. Sometimes it'll just show uh, 
just the name and the just the name of it and the link. Um, but some themes may choose to show it, so you can give it a description as well. It's also good for a back end use, so you can describe what this category is for, and then click add new category. Um, and then other thing you can do is add a assign it a parent category. So if you have a category that's meant to be a subcategory of an existing category, all you would need to do is type in the name um, of the category, and then under parent category, you want to give it the actual category that it's meant to be a subcategory of. Give it a description if you'd like, and click add new category, and you can see, and you can see. There's no limit on how many categories you can apply or you can add. Um, you can add as many as you need, um, but essentially you want to make sure that you're adding parent categories if you need to. And then once you've added all your categories, um, you can then assign those posts to the different categories. Um, you can also add categories directly from the posts back end. If you click into a post, um, you can see there is the uh, option for categories and you can see the existing category that we have. And we can also add a new category directly um, from here as well. And you can add a parent category to that as well. Um, and then update as you need. Another thing you can do is add tags as well. Um, tags are similar to categories, except tags have no hierarchy. Um, it's just another way of organizing your categories, but there's no like sub tag or anything like that equivalent to like a subcategory. Um, to add a new tag, you would just type in the name of the tag that you want. You can give it a slug if you want, but if not similar to categories, it'll just take the name of the tag um, and use that as a slug. And again, similar to the description, um, it's not just displayed by default. It just depends on the theme that you use. Will it display the category or the tag or not? And just click add new tag to add that as a tag. The next thing then is the media library and the media library is essentially um, where all of your media is stored once you've uploaded it to the site. This isn't just images, it can be content like uh, documents, site, uh, audio files, video files, PDFs, things like that. Um, it's all be going to be saved here. To add a new one directly to the media library, you can click on add new, click on select files and it'll open up your computer library. And you could just click on the file that you want. And you can see it uploads immediately. Um, and you can see when you give it, uh, when you upload it, you have space to add alt text. Um, alt text is really good for SEO because it tells Google search engines what this image is about. And you can rank for those for this text as well. Um, and you can give it a caption. And again, depending on the theme that you use, um, sometimes it'll display the caption. Um, another thing that it does is it can copy the URL to um, the file. The, it'll give each file a URL. Um, this will be good if you have any documents to display. You can paste the URL in, the, uh, in buttons so then when people click on it, they can download a PDF. But essentially all of your uh, items and media files will go here. Next tab you have is the pages and the pages tab is where basically all the pages on your website go. Um, so by default, you get the privacy page and the sample page, but if you want, you can add a new page just through here. And you can add the name of the page. Now, depending on how you plan on building your site, um, if you have a theme, and you've decided to purchase a theme, then, or even download a free theme, then, the home page can be edited from here. If you decide to use a page builder like Divi or Edit or Elementor, um, you can design your own page um, using those elements as well. It's just important that you have the actual page uh, set up first um, and give it a featured image. And then depending on how what theme and what plugins you're using, you can edit the pages that way. The next thing uh, then is the comments. So if there's a comment section on any part of your website, usually it's in the blogs, they'll all be here. And the way the comments work is that they kind of allow your visitors to have a discussion with you and each other. Um, and when you activate comments on a page or a post, WordPress installs several kind of text boxes after your content where people can submit their comments. And you can 
see with the comments. Um, you can change the status of them to uh, pending, which means custom comments are submitted by your visitors but won't be visible on your blog. Um, approved, meaning comments are published and are visible. Spam are comments as, uh, flagged as spam and then trash are comments marked as unwanted and they'll be automatically deleted after 30 days. Um, you can reply to comments and you can also choose to edit anyone's comments as well. Um, once a visitor submits his or her comments, WordPress will follow your preferences and either hold the comment for your approval or post it immediately. Um, if you see a comment that's been marked as spam and you actually realize it's a real comment, then you can mark it as not spam as well. To look at your discussion settings, all you need to do is go into uh, settings and go into discussion. And you can see the comment settings here. So you can choose to whether or not allow people to post a comment without filling their name or email, if they have to be logged in. Um, if posts are older than 14 days, you can automatically close comment boxes. So uh, older comment posts aren't uh, are able to have comments on them. You can show uh, comments cookies. You can break comments into pages, things like that. You can set up notifications as well. So anyone put if anyone posts a comment, you get an email or if a comment is held for moderation. Um, your default post settings is uh, allow people to submit comments on new posts um, or you can allow link and notifications from other blogs. Um, before a comment appears, you can decide if you want to, to manually approve the comment or uh, if the author has previously approved comment, then you can uh, allow it to post as well. So all your discussion settings are set here. The next thing then is appearance. So this is where all of your themes go. So WordPress uses themes to control the design and layout of your site. Um, themes are essentially site files that are stored and they control every part of your website in terms of how the header should look, how a default page structure should be, the footer, things like that. Um, so when you first install WordPress, you get the 2023 theme or uh, depending on what year you install WordPress, it'll be a new theme depending on the year. Um, to add a new theme, all you need to do is click on add new. And you can see the theme directory here. There's loads of themes you can pick from. Um, free and uh, paid. So if you go into the feature filter, what you can do is um, you can browse by subject if you know what type of uh, website you're doing. Um, if it's a food and drink website, if you, there's certain features you want to add with certain layouts. Um, so for example, if you click blog and click apply filters, it'll show all the themes that are uh, optimized for like a blog content layout and you can click into them and you can preview them as well. So if I click on preview, um, it can show me basically the fonts that are going to be used, the colors and things like that. And it can also give you a briefing as well as to how um, this theme works um, and things like that. So on the WordPress directory itself, there's free themes, but you can also go onto uh, websites like Infanto Elements um, to look at pr premium themes as well. Um, so all your themes basically are managed here. Next thing is the plugins. So plugins are essentially a piece of software that plugs into your WordPress site. Um, plugins can add new functionality, extend existing functionality on your site um, that allows you to create any kind of website. So for example, if you wanted to make a WordPress uh, e-commerce website on your WordPress, then you need to install a plugin called WooCommerce, um, which is an all-in-one solution for e-commerce websites for you to sell products, set up products, sell them, create shipping information, uh, delivery information, things like that. Um, booking websites, you might want to use uh, plugins like Amelia. Um, event management websites, plugins like uh, Modern Event Calendar, all ex are plugins that extend the functionality and create new functionality. There are also plugins to help uh, performance, so things like caching plugins. There's also plugins that help communications, like uh, Gravity Forms to help for forms plugins as well. Then there's also page builders, which are different kind of plugins. Um, 
To add a new plugin, you need to just go into the plugin. There's two ways. You can either go into plugins, click on add new and open the WordPress directory for plugins. Um, all the free plugins that will be found in the WordPress directory. So things like Classic Editor, Gutenberg, BuddyPress are all free plugins. You can go into popular and see what the popular plugins are, what recommended plugins there are um, and things like that. Um, and they're all free and you can install them directly to the WordPress directory. So for example, if we go into WooCommerce and click install now, that'll install the plugin. After installing it, you need to activate it as well. So we'll wait for this to install. And you'll see after we need to activate it. So now it's been activate, uh, installed, so now we just click activate to actually activate the uh, plugin. And all plugins that you install will need be uh, installed the same way. You just need to install it first and then click activate. And usually what happens whenever you add a new plugin is that it'll add itself onto the side menu here. Sometimes when you install them, they come with a setup, setup wizard as well. Um, so you can set up uh, as a step-by-step -step guide as opposed to as yourself. Um, we have a full video on how to set up WooCommerce um, in our channel below if you'd like to check that out. Um, in the meantime, we'll just skip the setup wizard for this uh, for WooCommerce for now. And you can see with the new plugin, it's added itself to the left menu. Sometimes it adds itself as new tabs. So like the WooCommerce uh, plugin adds itself as new tabs on the left. Um, and sometimes they add itself within existing tabs. So sometimes it'll be within the settings tab and sometimes they'll be within the tools tab um, and they'll be kind of uh, set up here. Um, within the plugins dashboard, so once as you add more and more plugins, initially there's no plugins added when you first install WordPress, um, but all the plugins that you add will be in the plugins dashboard. And as well as in the updates dashboard tab, you'll also see the updates here. So if there's a plugin that needs updating, it'll show here that a plugin needs updating and you can update directly from the public plugins dashboard. So that's one way to add plugins. The other way to add plugins, um, and this is more for if this is a paid plugin, is if you go to the plugins website directly and purchase the plugin and download it from there. So for example, um, the Elementor plugin. Elementor is a really popular page builder. Um, while the Elementor Basic is free, the pro version of Elementor is uh, a paid plugin. So in order to uh, get the plugin, what you need to do is create an account, uh, purchase a plugin, um, if you click on the pricing, and look for the page builder plugin or whichever plugin it is that you want, and essentially you buy the plugin that you need, you'll be able to access the plugin from your account page and download the plugin from there. And then once you have the uh, plugin downloaded, what you need to do is go into Upload Plugin, choose File, and uh, select the plugin that you just downloaded.
and just open that plugin. Make sure that it's zipped and you don't unzip the plugin that you have and just click install now to begin installing that plugin. And then once it's installed, you want to click Activate Plugin. Um, and you can see the plugin's been act uh, installed and activated. With some plugins, it'll let you know if you're missing something. So for example, this plugin here, where you're missing the basic Elementor plugin, so you can download it directly from there. But essentially, all of your plugins, you're going to be managing from this plugin's dashboard. The next tab you want to go over is the users, and this is essentially where all of the users that have access to your site, any kind of access to your site, will be stored here. This includes any admin plugin, admin users, editor users, uh, and users, um, subscriber users, things like that. Um, so there's lots of different uh, roles uh, for users. There's admin who have complete control over. Uh, the website website. Um, when you first install WordPress, your admin user that you add is an admin user. Um, admin users uh, can add, edit, um, delete users. They can um, uh, control content across each site. Then you've got the editor, which can manage and publish posts um, and schedule content, but they can't install, activate plugins, or manage themes. Then you've got the author user who can write and publish their own posts and pages. They can delete their own posts, but they can't publish, edit, or delete anyone else's posts. So editors can do that, and authors can't. Contributors can write their posts um, as well, but they have to post it for review. They can't publish it themselves. An admin or an editor account will need to uh, publish it themselves. And then you've got subscriber, and they can manage their own profiles, read their posts on WordPress site, but they can't write their own publish or posts or write their own blogs or anything like that. Um, so to create a new user role, you need to have the user attach it to. So what you need to do is go into Add New on the User Dashboard. And the first thing you need to add is their username. So this is the username that they'll use to um, sign into. Then you want to assign them an email. And it's important that you give them an email so that if, they are, if there's any issues, um, they can reset their own passwords and things like that. Um, then you can give them a first name and a last name. This just makes it a bit more personable when they log in. So you can see at the top here it says my name at the top, so it makes it a bit more personable. It's good if you're adding a client to your website. Um, you can have their first name and last name. And Next thing then you need to generate a password. There's two ways to do the password. You can either generate a random password and if you're assigning the website for another person, you can send them the password. That's not always the best thing to do as sending passwords over email or anything um, isn't secure. So what you can do instead is send a user notification. So instead of you setting the password, the users will get a... The users will get a... email from WordPress uh, saying this is your email account, this is your user account, and then we'll give them a link to set their own passwords essentially. And the next thing then you want to give them the role. So you've got obviously um, admin, editor, author, contributor, contributor and subscriber. Because we added WooCommerce, it added uh, two new user roles as uh, for customer and shop manager. Um, so depending on what plugins you add, there's be some other user roles that will be added, but by default the main ones are admin, editor, author, contributor and subscriber and you select which uh, user that you have and then just click add new user. Um, and you can see in the users dashboard exactly you know who's on the site, who what users have access and again with like the other ones you have screen options and you can 
um, control what is actually on the screen as well. Next thing then is the tools and these are essentially WordPress tools. You won't always need them. It's good for if you're importing and exporting things um, from one site to another, from one WordPress site to another. The main thing you want to look at is the site health um, and this gives you an overview of the general sta state of your site. Um, what it'll do is it'll give you recommendations on what you should do. So one of the recommendations is to remove inactive themes um, to help your site security and one or more recommended modules are missing. So some uh, modules are missing for PHP. So what you want to do is essentially look at these site health and if you have the technical you know, capability you can uh, sort out these site health issues by yourself. Um, the other thing you can do is take these issues and contact your hosting provider um, as they'll be able to be equipped on how to ha handle these issues. They'll either tell you how to do it or they can do it themselves. The other thing you can do then is settings and this is a general settings for your WordPress website. Things like your site title and tagline are controlled here. Um, depending on if you have a membership site you can decide if you want anyone can register. Default roles as you said with subscriber but you can change that to default role to be editor um, or whatever default role that you want. It's also important that you have the correct time zone, time format, uh, date format and site language. Um, on your site as well and what week the site starts on. Then you've got other options like writing. Um, so with that you have options on what category something's supposed to be on, what post format something's supposed to be on, things like that. Um, and then you've got reading as well. Um, so if the home page is meant to display your latest posts or static page. If it's a static page you can decide which is your home page and which is your uh, post page and how many pages, how many posts the blog page is meant to show at a time um, and full text uh, post feed as well. Another uh, important feature that you may or may not want to use is search engine visibility. So whether or not you want to discourage search engines from indexing the site. Now if your site is not ready uh, for public viewing um, you can check that. Again it's up to search engines to honor this request but essentially there'll be robots blocking the site and Google will be able to visit it. Um, it's I guess useful if you wanted to stop people from looking at a site that's not finished however you need to remember to uh, enable that again otherwise once the site is ready and this isn't enabled it won't be ranking for anything. Um, next thing then is permalinks. Um, so with the permalinks uh, by default it'll just show post name but you can give it a custom structure um, or a plain structure as well. Um, you want to go for something a bit readable so post name or custom structure would work. Um, and then just save your changes once you're, once you're done. So that's basically it. That's how you would um, uh, install WordPress and a basic kind of overview of WordPress. Um, for more information on how to install themes, what kind of themes you should use, page builders, uh, please check out our channel. We have lots of video videos um, about that as well. Thank you. So in conclusion, both WordPress and Adobe Dreamweaver have their pros and their cons. Um, if you're trying to figure out which platform is best for you, some of the things you might want to consider, uh, first of all, and most importantly, is your level of skill. If you are a new newcomer, if you don't have a lot of experience in web design or web coding, then Adobe Dreamweaver might be a bit too much for you. Uh, the, in, the editor is quite complex. It's a lot to get your head around, especially if you're not being shown and you're trying to do it yourself. Um, WordPress uh, obviously is a little bit more uh, easier in terms of uh, I, you can get as many templates as you need. Um, builders make your life a little bit easier in terms of building your site. Um, but uh, as, as well as that, then there's also room for if you did eventually want to upload your own custom theme and really customize it how you want the design, you have room for that as well. Adobe Dreamweaver doesn't have that kind of flexibility. It's always going to be very custom and very kind of complex, whereas Word WordPress is a little bit flexible as in that as well. Um, WordPress can be very lightweight and there's a lot of hosting providers out there that cater to WordPress website to ensure that your website is fast and optimized uh, as much as possible. Um, so another thing that you also want to make sure of is cost. So um, as mentioned before, the Adobe Dreamweaver uh, costs up to £20 a month, which can really add up. Unless you are already going for Adobe products that 
already come with the Cloud Suites, so like Behance, Adobe Fonts, things like that. Um, then it might be too costly to just go with the Adobe Dreamweaver alone. However, if you have the other apps as well, or you're planning to use the other apps, then maybe it's a bit more cost effective if you go for the Creative Suite um, option as well. WordPress, we've seen there's different uh, plans you have versus if you use .org and .com. Um, but again, the cost of WordPress itself is free. But what you're paying for is any premium themes. You're paying for hosting. Um, and you're paying for any additional page, page builders if you decide to use premium page builders. So um, another thing just to be aware of. Um, overall, those two things are probably the most important. If you decide you want complete control uh, as complex as possible um, and you have the experience for it, uh, both Adobe and WordPress will suit that. Um, but definitely if you're a beginner, I recommend even starting out with something a bit more simpler like Wix or Shopify um, so you can understand basic uh, coding or website uh, standard practices and then slowly progress your way to WordPress and maybe one day sort of to Adobe Dreamweaver.